Okay, guys, so today we're going to do this drawing, which has a line of tangency on the front view. Um, so I'm going to walk you through this guy in Inventor, and so here we go. So, of course, we're going new, standard IPT, create. And we're going to wait for Inventor to be Inventor. And open up. Okay, if you get the weird box, remember to go home. And let's take a look at this drawing and decide what plane we're going to draw on. So I'm thinking the best thing to do is draw this L shape in the right-hand view. So we're actually going to draw on the right plane. So I'm going to open up origin, and that is YZ. And I'm going to click on YZ, and then I'm going to click on Start 2D Sketch. So now I'm going to draw that L shape. It's kind of skinnier down the bottom. And I'm ignoring that, um, that arc for right now, because we're going to come around and we're going to do that in the front view. So let's look at our dimensions. So this measurement here is going to be one and a half. So let's go dimension, 1.5, zoom ourselves out. And now we need to figure out the height of the L. Well, the height of the L, this little piece down here is 3 eighths, which is in decimal 0.375. Okay. And then from the little shelf to the center of the circle is one and one eighth, which is 1.125. And then you have to add the radius because from the center of this circle to this big radius is one. So we're gonna let Inventor do all of that math for us. So I'm gonna click on dimension. I'm gonna click this line and I'm gonna type in point 375 plus 1.125 plus, whoops, plus one. And it's two and a half. Okay. Now I need this measurement here, which is the thickness, which I already told you is three ace, which is 0.375. Will Inventor do fractions? Um, it's fussy, but it sometimes it will. We'll try it when we do the top piece. So this piece here is half an inch. So you can do one slash two, and it will do half an inch. The thing it gets really cranky about is when you have a mixed number. So I always suggest you put in the decimal when you have like one and a quarter. It doesn't understand that they're two separate numbers. Okay, so now we have all of our measurements defined and we're going to finish the sketch. So let's see how much we're going to extrude this guy. And the entire length of this thing, from this corner to the center of the circle, is 1. From this center of the little circle to the center of the other circle is 3. And from the center of that circle to the edge is 1, so it's going to be 5. So this is a big extrusion. We're going to extrude five inches. Okay, and now we have like this little weird shelf looking thing. So let's start carving out our front view. And we're going to carve out our front view on this surface here. All right, and you guys know that whenever you uh, put a sketch on existing geometry, you have to go project cut edges. So we're going to do that. And we're also going to add a line here from this corner to this corner. And that makes sure that Inventor knows that we want to measure from that, that shelf piece. Okay. So now on this guy, on this back piece, we have this arc. So let's start by drawing the arc, by drawing a circle and then trimming it. So the radius of the circle is one, which means the diameter is gonna be what, friends? If you said two, you get a gold star. So I'm going to draw my circle. And I'm going to dimension that to two. 
And now I have to put the measurements for where it actually goes. So let's go back to our drawing. And it is four inches from the left hand side and it's one and an eighth from the measurement on the shelf. So let's go ahead and do that from here to here. The center of the circle is gonna be 1.125. And then from this line to the center of the circle is going to be four. And you'll see now that my circle is just where I want it. Well, now I need to add that line to give it the slope. So I'm gonna click on line and I'm gonna to come to this corner over here and I'm gonna bring the line up near the circle. Notice I don't have it touching the circle. So I'm gonna hit escape on my keyboard and then I'm gonna come over here. You see where you have this circle with the line laying on top of it? That's your tangent constraint. That's gonna make sure that this line is perfectly tangent to the circle. So I'm gonna click on that, then I'm gonna click on the line and I'm gonna click on the circle and magic happens. Okay, so now it is perfectly tangent. You can see Inventor even put a little tangent symbol there. So I know that I've created a tangent constraint. So now I'm gonna to go to trim. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim away this little piece that kind of like sticks out of nowhere. And then I'm gonna trim away this part of the circle. And now I have that arc that's showing in this view. And now we're gonna use extrude with a cut to get rid of this piece we don't want. So I'm gonna finish the sketch. I'm gonna click on extrude and I'm gonna select this part that goes behind it. I'm gonna use my cut feature and under extents, I'm just gonna use all. Okay, and now I have that little hump cut there. Now we have to do this, the holes. So I'm gonna click on my front view and I'm gonna zoom in, zoom in a bit. And I'm going to go to hole and I'm going to change my placement to concentric reference. I'm going to click in the center. And what is the measurement of that circle? The circle on the inside has a diameter of seven eighths, which is 0.875. How do I know that? Because I've been doing this far too long, guys. You're going to click concentric reference and then you're going to pick the arc and notice it kicks it right into the center of the circle and we're gonna hit apply. Now, why was I able to use concentric reference? Because these guys share the same center. See how the center line goes through both the arc and the circle? That's how you know. I'm actually gonna close the whole command because I need to reorient this thing. I'm gonna go home because my, my next two circles are on this shelf piece. So I'm gonna click on whole. I'm gonna click here and the hole's way too big because it still defaults to the one I just used. These guys are 3 eighths, okay, which is 0.375, right? Then we're gonna do our reference. From this edge, how far over is it? It's, it's one inch from the corner to the right and it's half an inch back from the edge. So we're gonna change this to one. We're gonna change, we're gonna click on this line, this front line, and we're gonna change that to 0.5 and we're gonna hit apply. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna click and it's gonna be the same diameter because it says two times. So that means two of the same. And now we're gonna do our reference points. Pick my red arrow. This guy's gonna be 0.5. And from the left, it's gonna be one inch. Okay. And I believe we are done with this guy. Let's take one last look. Looks like we got everything. We've got the three holes. We've got the tangent. We've got the little hump on the back. So now you guys are gonna put a color on. Let's try rust. There we go. There's my rusted piece. So now I'm gonna go file, save as, and this one is Inventor 40. Okay. So then I'm gonna go file, new, PLTWA and create. Project name is practice 
My name is my name. Today is the 22nd. And this is Inventor 40. Okay. Tell it OK. Click on base. Click above it. Click to the right. Click to kitty corner. It's going to bring it in at half scale, and that's fine. Um, it is a pretty big part, so tell it OK. We'll separate these guys out. We'll move this guy over. And you know what? I think we can go three-quarter scale on the ortho view. So let's double click on the on the front view. We're going to change the scale to 0 0.75. And it should make all of the ortho views 0 0.75 scale. And your isometric is going to stay small. So then we're going to go into annotate. We're going to do our center lines. So we're going to click this guy. And then I'm also going to click the circle again so that it gets the center lines on the, on the bottom part of the circle. I'm going to click on these guys to get their center lines. Then I'm going to do center line bisector for my whole, where it looks like a hole. So remember, click the two lines and it drops the line in between. Now somebody's going to say, hey, how come that line that you're drawing, that secondary center line, doesn't do long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash, like it usually does? The reason is, is the drawing um, has shrunk that line, and it's totally fine to let your, your center line look like that. Okay. So we're going to hit Escape. We're going to double click on this guy here, pick the shaded view, tell it OK. You're going to go File save as, let it save right where it wants to save. If you are submitting in Canvas, you need to submit as a PDF. Some of you guys are still trying to send me inventor files. File, save, uh, if you go to export, file export PDF, it's right here. You just click on that and hit save and then you can upload that to Canvas. Folks in the room, you don't need to print, you don't need to upload, you can just turn it into the back tray as a hard copy. Okay, so here you go. I will be back with your major grade drawing next.